Okay, so stock market update. Here we go. Let's dive straight into the data and where we are with all of this. Those are the PE ratios. The red shows you just how overvalued so much of the market is. If you were to look just at share price for profits, in other words, you're paying $35 for every dollar of profit Microsoft generates in order to buy a share in Microsoft. And you might say, well, $35 for a dollar is perfectly fine. Well, you can get ExxonMobil for $7 for every dollar of profit they make, or Amazon for 311 and you might say, well, wait a minute, it's not just about the profits they've made, it's about what they might make, and you're absolutely correct on that. And we'll come to that in a second. It's been a really mixed bag of a week. Obviously, some of the energy stocks have done well. Some of the companies with earnings have done well and not so well. Uh, nothing much to read into that specifically, and I'll come into individual stocks in a second. Price earnings growth ratio, now what this does is it says, well, yeah, it's not just the share price you're paying for the profits a company's making, but the growth in profits it's likely to make. Now you want the number to be below one, in which case it's the banks which are cheap. Uh, but again, you see some very expensive numbers with say a Microsoft or an Apple. Could be that just the financial ways in which we value companies is wrong, which is fine. NASDAQ still above 40% this year. What a bumper year for my pension. The S&P 500 up nearly 20%, so that's fantastic as well year to date. Now we've got a bit of a downturn, a bit of profit taking. As I said, we will get. However, it is tactical, not strategic. In other words, it's not going to last because this momentum measure will almost certainly uh, overwrite that. So whilst we might get some, as shown by the stochastic, some short-term profit taking and falls uh, like this, they won't be long lasting all right the FTSE 100 for those interested in the UK whenever you get the MACD just touching its moving average you tend to get a blip up in the price it's to suck people in before it falls again and that happens time and time again you can see it sort of happening there over a prolonged period sucks people in and then collapses so don't read too much into some recent rises in the UK markets now going back to the US. What do we see? We see this likely to continue. So any decline should be short term, short in duration. Okay, and you will and should get a little bit of profit taking, I would have thought, but nothing too much to panic about. You know how to read this. That's what return you'd get if the average analyst forecast was correct from its current price. That's the current price. That's the average. So I won't go into all of them for you. Now, Alphabet shot up. Some would say unexpectedly after its results. You can see the fall there hasn't lasted long. Now we're probably likely to do that. You can certainly see the analysts seem to think so. And this should continue in that direction. Uh, and this is the kind of what I mean by tactical decline that some of the stocks will get. That bit of profit taking before it moves upwards as opposed to tactical decline and then strategic decline, which means it just keeps falling. Okay, posh way of saying short term and long term. Return potential, 13% on that. Another bellwether, obviously Microsoft, should I worry yet that it's falling? No, would you put a gun to my head and say, make a decision? Well, if you did, I would probably not buy it today. I'd probably wait a week or so and let's see what happens. See if I can pick it up cheaper. Uh, but as I say, I don't think it'll be a longer term decline i think it's just more short term uh, but as i said i wouldn't necessarily buy it today because it might fall a bit more and uh, i can pick it up a little bit cheaper same story with amazon so i don't really need to go into much detail on that just similar story uh disney just got back from euro disney cold wet uh and that was just the mother-in-law disney there we go it's down there and what's likely to happen Ooh, should do that should do that it's been a huge disappointment let's see uh we'll keep an eye on it we'll keep an eye on it nvidia if you're risk averse as i've said every single week if you're risk averse you would have sold out of it if you're risk loving you keep hold of it so between that figure zero and a hundred percent i keep a hundred percent sell zero percent 
uh, you decide what your risk appetite is. What I would say is there might be some, as I said, profit taking. And if you've made this gain as we have since January, you're going to start saying, and by the way, if you want to see all of that and just look at my Telegram channel, uh, then you're going to get an idea that, oh, this is falling off a bit. Uh, and therefore, I don't want to get rid of my gains that I've made. So I'm going to get out. Or you might sell 10% or 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 and so on, depending on your particular risk appetite. Don't forget the authentic links for me are on alpishpatel.com forward slash links there's a hell of a lot of scammers out there pretending to be me and messaging people i am not messaging you out of the blue okay um, and the only genuine links i have are on alpishpatel.com forward slash links so don't be scammed by the people out there tesla moves are going like this Okay, and we can see that over there. So short term decline, longer term move up. And remember, the declines can be quite scary. It can be quite sizable. Okay, so you see it there. And similarly with Meta, uh, what do we see? Should hit an all time high this year, will hit an all time high this year. But at the moment, this is starting to get a bit overbought. And when that happens, well, just have a look at this. You can have a prolonged period of sideways moves, as happened here. So don't think it only goes in one direction or the other. Uh, could this be overbought and just start doing this, this declining? Yeah, that could happen. So could we get sideways moves in this for a while? Yeah, although I suspect we're going to get an all-time high before the year end. So the upside on this is somewhat limited now in the short term to towards the end of the year uh, but obviously longer term yeah it'll continue rising and by longer term i mean over the next two three four five years but we're really concerned about what's going to happen in the next six months service now another one that i like it's got some profit taking going on so if you bought here you're thinking oh great uh, but if like us you bought earlier in the year then fine there's some some of that going on now remember this is more volatile than many technology companies you can have quite steep declines in this Okay, so if you put a gun to my head, would I buy some more today? No, but what I would think is, oh, that could fall a bit more. So I'm just going to hold off for the moment. And obviously, the people who've been following me on my great investments program are doing bloody incredibly well. Uh, and the clues have been there, not just what the analysts have said, not just what the fundamentals are, but also as we followed how the momentum indicators have moved. But most importantly, how the analysts and the uh, sorry, how the fundamentals have been, the value, growth, income, cash flow, which is what we do for them. So don't forget to look at campaignforamillion.com. And if you're not already part of the Great Investments Program, you should be. We've got a lot of business owners, a lot of cash-rich, time-poor professionals, people who want to have more of a handle on their pension and their portfolio than the IFA or the wealth managers give them. Uh, and particularly the kind of people we've got on there are the ones who say, well, wait a minute, the Nasdaq has gone up 40%. Well, how come my SIP or ISA hasn't? And it's only up about 5 or 6%. Uh, and then they speak to their IFA and say, hey, as you've got to understand, whilst we did put 0.01% in Microsoft and NVIDIA, we, we, we did put 99% of your money in a spray and pray. Sounds good. Vietnamese, Japanese, Chinese stocks, because, you know, we just thought, and climate change stocks, because they had the right wording. Yeah, that's the usual BS they're going to give you. And they'll say, yeah, you've got to be absolutely diversified. Have 50 stock, have fifty funds with 100 stocks in each of them. Well, that's about, you know, 5,000 stocks right there. Great. Fantastic. Thank you. And that's why you're underperforming. Whereas what we've got to do is get the right number of companies, the good quality companies, have a look at their fundamentals, and then just keep an eye on it every fortnight. Um, but that's if you don't want a 5% return. If you're happy with it and give it to an expert, fine. But if you'd rather have a 40%, and that's just if you equal the index, let's say you don't even manage the index, let's say you do less than the index, 30% return, then fine. Then spend uh, five minutes every fortnight just monitoring the kind of companies that we suggest. On the whole, you're holding for 12 months, is our approach. So anyway, uh, we found that there's a lot of demand for doing it our way. Do get in touch. Thank you very much.